Welcome to Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, the arena of the supernatural, where supernatural is natural. Our vision is to bring Christ's abundant life, knowledge, and hope to Inanda, then to the whole world, in the form of preaching, teaching, holistic gospel, healing, deliverance, counseling, training, and discipleship. Here we go. At Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, Jesus is Lord. That single belief calls us together as a community and sends us into our world with hope and purpose. At Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, your past will never define your future. There is always redemption, which means there is always a brighter day. At Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, we do not think that we are better than any other church out there. We are just doing our best to become our best. At Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, we want you to believe in God, but also we want you to know that God believes in you. We are not against any people who do not attend church anywhere. Instead, we pursue them with love, the very same love that is pursuing us. At Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, we are committed to serve God and people. We take ownership and account for our decisions, answerable or accountable as for something within one's power. We do what we say we will do. We are learning to serve God with all our hearts and we are learning to worship Him with all our lives. And if you are looking for the perfect church, we are not it. At Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, we will make mistakes, but we will choose to grow from them. At Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, we are part of a global community that is knit together by the resurrection of Jesus. And by the way, at Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, we believe that really happened too. At Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, we will engage with people who are in real need because we are the hands and feet of Christ. And finally, we need you to hear this loud and clear. At Mount Zion Carnation Ministries, it's not our church at all, but it is His and we live and move and breathe in His church for His glory and fame and not for ours. So there's the invitation. You are invited to jump in with your whole heart at your own pace and experience the life that awaits you in Christ. Friends, this is going to be good. Welcome to Mount Zion Carnation Ministries from Dr. Swanem Somi and Tabisilem Somi. Where an anointing of introduction comes upon your life. An anointing of visibility comes upon your life. Because the worst thing that will happen to you is to be gifted and yet you are covered. Yet you are restricted. Yet you are limited. Yet it's like you are in a cage. And nobody knows who you are. Every limitation on your destiny, the fire of God will destroy it this morning. Somebody shout a better amen. Number three, if you want to be great, the ability to take risk, write it down. The ability to take risk. Help me touch your neighbor and say to them, it is too risky not to take a risk. Tell somebody, it is too risky not to take a risk. who are afraid of taking risk you will never advance in life you will remain at the same spot for 20 years God spoke to me very clearly and he said to me he said until you take giant steps I don't, I don't provide giant provisions Peter was with the other disciples in the boat when the sea was boisterous and suddenly Jesus appeared and Peter said to Jesus master if it is you bid me to come he didn't say bid us to come you know why in life it is what you desire that you deserve in life it is what you ask that you receive I've always said this everywhere I've gone to that great men successful men powerful men are located in the place of prayer by the content of their prayer requests the content of what they ask is what determines their place in life stop asking god for shoe and we ask god for the city of johannesburg ask god for toban ask god ask god for the nation stop asking god for for one car 
or one small house for you and your wife, what if you own an estate? What if you own an aircraft? I believe God, Dr. Swanee, that we have dedicated cars and we have dedicated children enough in this church. Very soon we shall be dedicating factories. Somebody is not clapping and shouting hallelujah. Very soon we shall be dedicating estates. Estates. And you write, you write Mount Zion estates. Look at Psalms, Psalms chapter 2 verse 8. I want to show you something very quickly. Psalms 2 verse 8. Read it. What does it say? Be fast. Psalms 2 verse 8. Ask of me. Ask of me. And I shall, and I shall give unto you the hidden for your inheritance and the uttermost part of the earth. Have you seen that you are the one limiting yourself by asking God for three square meal? Morning, afternoon, night. That's all I want, Lord. Just give me, I'll be okay. Give me daily bread. You appear before an almighty God and all you're asking him for is daily bread. At the summit in Lusaka, I shared an incident of a particular um, um, president we had in Nigeria. His name is President Abacha, a military general. A time came during his reign that one of his friends lost his life. One of his very dear friends, a friend to the president, lost his life. So the president sent for the first son of that his friend and said, come meet me at the, at the state house. And the young man came to the state house and sat in front of the president. And the president asked him, your father was my very good friend. What can I do for you? Just tell me what I can do for you. And the young man said, give me a car. You see the way you shouted now? Give me a car. The president looked at him and said, what did you say? He said, just give me a car. He was a young man. So the president called one of his assistants and said, take this young man to the back of my office. There are all kinds of cars. Anyone he wants, and he points, give it to him to go. So the young man went to the back, and the president called back his ADC and said to him, that young man must never be allowed to see me again in life. He's a fool. He's a big fool. You meet with the president and you ask for a car? Why don't you ask him to make you the minister of petroleum in Nigeria? <laughs> or make you the, the governor of Central Bank? You ask for a car. That's how some of us, that's how some of us behave with before God. You go before the almighty God, you're asking him for a suit, our angels will slap you in the realm of the spirit there. This young man, is a fool. Asking God. He said, ask of me. And I will give you double. Listen, I don't know what this church has achieved, but this is just the beginning. I said, this is just the beginning for this church. Very soon, you shall buy shopping malls like this. Agabata, Korea, Kapata. Listen, God is able to do exceedingly. The God you and I serve is a God of impossibilities. Stop limiting him by your small mind. There are two words, Dr. Swane, that I removed from my dictionary. The words impossibilities and the word failure. When you say impossibility and you say failure, you are speaking Greek to me. I don't know what you're talking about. Because with God, all things are possible. And there is nothing like failure in life. Every failure is an opportunity to rise up again and begin more intelligently. There are no failures in life. Every big shot you see today was a small shot yesterday who refused to stop shooting. You are a small shot today. But if you decide to stop shooting, you're on your way to becoming a big shot. They say in professional football, those who watch Chelsea and the rest of them, I mean, I'm, I'm not uh, Manchester United, I am Kingdom United, I don't watch football. So, but those who watch, they will tell you, they will tell you that in professional football, the average players run to where the ball is, but professional players run to where the ball is going to. 
Ask your neighbor, do you know where the ball is going to? Ask your neighbor. Or you are still where the ball is. You are still at the point where the ball, the ball is about to change direction. Eight months is ahead of you this year. What do you want to do with it? Eight months is ahead of you this year. What are your plans? I was speaking in, in a particular service this morning before I came here. I said to them, don't make small plans. Make big plans. Big plans will attract big people to you. Small plans will attract small people to you. And small people will give you big wahala, big problem. They are small in their mind. You don't need them this year. I pray for you that God will separate every small person from your life. That your amen is suffering from HIV. Let me hear a louder amen, somebody. Sometimes, leave some poor people. Leave them alone. Leave, leave, them, leave them. And go and succeed. After you have succeeded, come back and help them. Help them. Come back and help them. But leave them alone. Because they will inflict you with their poverty mentality, poverty mindset. They will tell you, have you forgotten that you are, you are, you are South African or you have, have you forgotten that you are not Bill Gates? Number four. Number four. Ability to maximize opportunities. Write it down. You want to be great? You must possess the ability to maximize every opportunity that comes to you. Look at me, ladies and gentlemen. Opportunities are seats for greatness. Every opportunity that is right in front of you is an opportunity or a platform for your generation to know who you are. Listen to me very carefully. If your absence is not felt in a place, your presence there was not relevant. If you leave a location, a community, a church, a family, and they don't look for you, they don't, they don't feel your absence, that means your presence there was useless. Listen to me. When people become used to you, you become useless before them. Yeah. When people become used to your styles, they become used to your ideas. They become used. That's why I've always said this. Whenever you meet a poor man in life, if you spell poor, it is P-O-O-R. It means passing over opportunities regularly. That's a poor man. That's exactly how you know a man who is poor. Passing over opportunities regularly. He doesn't know what to do with opportunities. He keeps waiting for opportunities instead of creating opportunities. Tell your neighbor, stop waiting for opportunities. Start creating opportunities. Tell somebody that start creating opportunities. I don't wait for things to happen to me. I happen myself. I happen. I happen. I just happen. I can't wait. If you wait, you wait for a long time. The Bible says the gift of a man make it a way for him and will bring him before great men. Is what is on your inside. If there is no implosion, there cannot be an explosion. God will walk in you first before he can walk through you. So seize every opportunity. If you're given an opportunity in the house of God to say, take, take, take it seriously. You are about to become the next senator of Africa. If you're given an opportunity to serve, listen, any man who serves God, God will keep servicing him. You must serve him with all your might. You, you, must, you must serve him to a point that people will think that you have, you, are, you have lost your mind. That's the only time you can gain God's attention. You become, Catherine Kuhlman says, you, you become sold out. You, you are you are lost in it. You are dead. You know, God does not use men who are alive. God uses dead men. Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies. It will abide alone. Many of you are too alive to be used by God. You are too alive. You must get to a point where there is no difference between your personal money and God's money. 
Dr. Swan, I'm about to close. You know the man, Bill Gates, um, a few years ago, four, four years there about, they calculated, they calculated the money that Bill Gates gave out to charity for one year, just one year, January to December. The money he gave out to help people in different charities, and they said the wealth of 10 countries is not up to it. And you are here looking at me, speaking in tongues. The wealth of South Africa, Nigeria, Ghana, 10 nations is not up to the, the money one human being gave out for charity. And you are here clapping and jumping. The same 24 hours you have is the same one he has. It is said that the five richest families in America, one, two, three, four, five, the money they control is more than the money the rest of the 7.9 billion people have. The same human being like you and I. Can you shake somebody and say, and say get ready, get ready, tell somebody, get ready. I'm tired of remaining small and ordinary. Can I be in this world? And, uh, and uh, the first five people control. Abba, what is this? There's what is called the, 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 the Pareto Principle. I don't know if you know about the Pareto Principle. The Pareto Principle states that 80% of the wealth in South Africa, in this nation, is in the hands of 20% of the population. 80% of the wealth here, 20% control it. Then the remaining 20% of the wealth and resources, the remaining 80% of the population is struggling for it. Ask your neighbor, where do you belong? Hey. Ask somebody, where do you, where, where, where? Which, which of the equation and percentage do you belong? Write this down. Write this down. Listen, there are those who make the news. There are those who watch the news. There are those who don't even know what the news is talking about. I pray for a radical person in this church today. You will make the news in your generation. That's your amen is suffering from my daughter. I said you will make the news. You will make the news in your business. You will make the news with your career. I don't want to watch the news. I want to be one of those that will make the news. Moi, I wrote in my Bible. If you open it, you'll see. I will not go through this world unnoticed. I can't. I can't pass through this world, live for 60 years. And it was 60, wasted 60 years. Eating, eating, eating biryani and chicken and uh, eating KFC. KFC. God is tired of consumers. He's looking for contributors. You have consumed enough. It's time to contribute. The shoe you are wearing, somebody produced it. The shirt, the tie, somebody produced it. What are you producing yourself? What is your output? What is your production? Number five. The power of discipline. You will not be great if you don't understand the importance and the power of discipline. Discipline is the ability to know what to do at the right time. That's what they call discipline. It's not enough for you to know that it is important to pray. Ha! Igabara. Do you know that there are, there are people who can preach about prayer but they don't pray? There are people who can talk about fasting but they don't fast. There are people who can talk about giving but they don't give. What makes you great? It's not what people give to you. It's what you give out yourself. You don't pray away poverty. You give away poverty. Amen. You discipline yourself. You discipline yourself to be able to achieve your destiny of greatness. How many books have you read this month? Where you 
are now, my brothers and my sisters, where you are now is where your knowledge took you to. If you want an improvement, you must begin to seek superior knowledge. Amen. Invest in yourself. Be disciplined. Be disciplined. If you ever want to achieve greatness in life. A man who is not disciplined is like a city without a wall. Another word for discipline is what is called principles. You must be principled. There is no great man, there is no successful man that is not principled. You are either hey, you are either the available or you are the desirable. Those are the classes of people in life. There are those who are the availables. But there are those who are the desirables. The world is desiring them. The world is looking for them. People are, people are struggling to spend five minutes with them because they carry solutions to the needs of their generation. Write this down. Your wealth in life, your wealth in life will be determined by the problems you are solving. You didn't hear me. The higher the problems you are solving, the greater the, the kule, you know, the greater the wealth that comes to you. Every day of your life, the people you give your money to are those who are solving your problems. So when you go to a motor mechanic, you're paying him for your ignorance. When you go to a doctor, you're paying him for your ignorance. You're paying him for the six years that he spent in medical school. So you must develop a system to solve problems for men and women. And the more you solve their problems, you must develop ideas that can create products, that can create services that will meet the needs of your generation. I read earlier on today, Romans chapter 8 verse 19. The Bible says the earnest expectations of the creature is waiting for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of Mount Zion. The world is waiting for you, my dear. Amen. Japan is waiting for you, my friend. America is waiting for you, my friend. China is waiting for you, my friend. Amen. Dr. Swani, a friend of mine came back from China and was sharing something with me. He said to me, every house in China is a company. Every, every house is a business. <laughs> my tacos. Every company, as you enter, there's company in front, they live at the back. Every house, they are producing something. They are creating a product. They are solving a problem. That is why it will be very difficult for China not to become the next world superpower. Very difficult. Go back home today with a holy anger. Sit down on your bed by 12 midnight, 1 a.m. And ask God to reveal to you the problem you were created to solve. Amen. How close. The best schools have not been built. The best clothes have not been designed. The best churches have not been built. The best, the best restaurants have not been opened. God is about to use you to shock your world. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So don't be intimidated by what other people have done. You can beat the record. Amen. I say you can beat the records. Amen. You can compete with CNN. Hey, hey, hey. You can compete with Oprah Winfrey. Hey, hey, hey. I hope I'm talking to the right people here. Number seven. No, no, number six, right? The power of diligence. Write it down. There are seven of them, but I'll give you number six. The power of diligence. If you read Proverbs chapter 22, verse 25, the Bible says, See thou a man that is diligent. Diligent. The word diligence is another word for commitment. You know, whatever we add to you, will first of all take away from you. Yes. Anything that will add to your life will first of all take away from your life. You must be, you must be 
dangerously committed to the assignment that God has given to you. You must learn how you must learn how to be to be to be so convinced about the assignment that nobody can talk you out of it. The Bible said Joseph had a dream from God, and the Bible says his brothers hated him for his words and for his dreams. But guess what? The Bible said, and Joseph dreamed another dream. Hi, Jesus Christ. The more they hate you, the more you should be dreaming more dreams. The more they try to stop you, the more you should be dreaming new dreams. The more they try to resist you. Why? It is only a man who is carrying destiny that the devil will resist and stop. If your life is going to give the devil high blood pressure, he will try to stop you. If everybody in your family likes you, you are not going anywhere in life. You are not. You, don't, you are not going anywhere. When you see children under a tree throwing a stone, concentrate at the stones. You lose your future and your destiny. Parable. You must be focused. If you want to become a focus in life, you must be focused. Focused at the assignment. Focused at what God has called you to do. Work hard at it. Don't be sloppy. Don't be lazy. There's no future for a lazy man. Write down three words. Diligence. Determination. Discipline. You see these three words? Let them become your watchword in life. Dr. Swane, one of the, one of the generals that God has raised in Nigeria, I probably may not mention his name, he owns four universities. He owns four aircrafts. He's building a 100,000 seater church right now in Lagos. That man takes his breakfast at 1 a.m. 1 a.m. That is when he starts his day. When some of you are still dreaming about ancestors. That's when he, he takes his first breakfast at 1 a.m. I'm asking you not to sleep. I'm not. I'm not asking you not to sleep, my dear. I'm not asking you not to take a break and rest. But I'm simply saying to you, my brothers and my sisters, that whatever God has given to you in your hands, you must be disciplined. You must work hard with it. You must ensure that you're not lazy around the assignments and the vision that God has given to you. The days of man are falling down from heaven are over. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Number seven and the last. This one is one of the most important to me. I call it the power of continuous learning. The power of continuous learning. Ladies and gentlemen, the day you stop learning, you start dying. The day you stop improving, you plateau. So there's what is called you know, I think it's the Japanese that use this principle. It's called the Kaizen principle. I don't know if you've ever heard Kaizen principle. It is the principle of constant improvement. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? So get to a point where you are not satisfied with where you are. Ladies and gentlemen, I went to meet one of the fathers of faith in Nigeria as a young man. And he looked at me and he said to me, young man, when people say to you, well done, well done, thank them, go back to your room, lock the door, say to yourself, do more, do more. Because people's well done today can bury your tomorrow's potentials. Don't let it get into your head. Refire. You see, you should build on the momentum. There are two critical moments in the life of every man. Number one is when things are not working well around you. When things are not moving as you want them to do. Secondly is when everything is moving as you want it to be. Those are two critical moments. There are two things you must learn to do at each of these moments. I will not tell you about the other one. I will ask you to go and find it in my book. The one that when things are not working well. But let me tell you about when everything is working well with you. That is not the time to start celebrating. That is not the time to become, to start resting. That is the time to build on the momentum. That is the time to refire. That is the time to catch another dream. If you have conquered one territory, go and take another territory. If you have conquered one assignment, go and initiate another one. 
Dr. Swane, one of the secrets of my life is every time you meet me, I have 12 projects I'm working on. 12. Every time you come to where I am, there are 12 projects on my list. If I finish one, I eliminate it, I add another one to it. So that your brain will keep working. If your brain sweats, it will produce sweet for you. Stand to your feet, everybody. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Some of you are even struggling to stand now. <laughs> but stand to your feet. Listen, you're going to, you're going to target, you're going to target, listen, I want everybody praying on this time. The glory of God will rest on this place. You're going to target your future. You're going to speak into your future. Forget about yesterday. A brand new day is open for you right now. A brand new season is open for you right now. Can somebody say amen to the hearing? Say amen. amen. So listen. May to December. What, where do you want to see yourself by the end of this month? By the end of this year? Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Everybody in this building. Go ahead and speak to the Lord any way you are. There is, there is a seed of greatness inside of you. There is a seed of greatness inside of you. There is an anointing of greatness inside of you. Father, I will not be a local champion. Everybody talk to the Lord. Father, I will not be an ordinary person. Go ahead and talk to the Lord. Monta kabare ke frosa katala. Le to pataja barabara. Monta kis go vadagara. Le ta gabarara. Ris ke barabara. Eh you are the Monta kabaya. Upon upon la pataka sik. E barota kaba. Monta kaba. Monte kuski barata kaba. Le sufre patis. Engadu kaba ya. Monta kasi. Eno kebiado. Lento kaba. There's a glorious future ahead of you, my friends. God has a plan of greatness for your life. God has a great plan for your future. Can you begin to call it forth? Call forth the things that be not as though they were. I don't care the failures you have experienced. This is a brand new season. This is a brand new day. This is a brand new chapter. In the name of Jesus. Everybody stand still where you are. No more movement. Lord, you are glorious. And worthy to be praised. You are the Lamb. Upon the throne. Oh, and on to you. my voice to say you are the land of the throne you're the alpha and omega we worship you oh God Your voice all over this place. You are Alpha and Omega. We will worship you, our Lord. Come on! You are worthy, so be praised. Everyone lift up your voice and sing. We give you. Lift up your voice and sing. I give you all glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are to be praised. Everyone, lift up your voice and sing.
One more time, everyone sing. I give you is in this place. One more time, everyone lift up your voice. I give you all the glory. I worship you, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. For the last time, for the last time, sing. I give you Just lift up your two hands. There are five of you here. The Lord says to me that where you are now is not where you're supposed to be. The level you're operating now is not the level where you're supposed to be. And the Lord said to me, an anointing is coming upon your life that will take you from the back to the front. I don't know who you are. But the Lord said, I will put treasures in their life that will advertise them to their world. Five of you, by the count of three, the anointing will come upon you. You will not be able to stand. I don't care where you are. But the Lord said, after this service, every limitation on your destiny will be lifted. Ushers, ushers, help them. Ushers, help them. They are five. Power of the Holy Ghost. Ushers, help them. Power of the Holy Ghost. All shall help them. Power of the Holy Ghost. It's not by might. It's not by power. There's somebody here. The Lord is changing your oil. I don't know who you are. The Lord said to me, there is going to be a rekindling of the talent and the grace and the giftings on your life. Somebody help that brother over there. That's right. The glory of God is at the back. There is a young lady at the back. You have been forgotten by your friends. They have laughed at you. They have mocked at you. Power is coming upon you. My God. Put her down. Put her down. My God. Somebody help this brother in front of me. Jesus. What is this? I give you praise. Somebody here. God is giving you prophetic anointing. I don't know who you are. The Lord said you will see into the future. The Lord said the things that have limited you hitherto shall limit you no more. Your eyes are going to open. Your ears are going to open. 